Welcome again. Uh, in all honesty, I don't think this is worth a separate video, but I just thought um, you kind of sometimes get bored of watching the same thing again and again. That's why I give it um, a separate video. Now, OCaml stack, very similar to what we learned in the last video for OCaml queue, but the concept is different. Let's go to our OCaml stack uh, module and we can learn that last in first out stack so the last element that enters the data structure is the first element to come out so module is called LIFO a queue is a FIFO first in first out uh, a stack is a LIFO last in first out the way we create it is very similar to the queue we use the function create to add something we say push to retrieve an element we say pop push adds element to the top of the stack pop removes and returns the topmost element in the stack so the last one we add <coughs> uh, unlike the queue where we retrieve the first one we add again it also removes that element whereas top it just re top returns the topmost element the last one we add without actually removing it it just returns it without removing it clear it clears the stack copies returns a fresh copy of the stack is empty checks whether the stack is empty or not length and iterate we've seen this before exactly the same as we learned before again going to our top level without wasting much of your time the way we create it is as you can see here s stack dot create create a stack again remember I keep repeating myself whatever you do here you should be able to do it in your source code maybe we can add another video uh, to put everything together in source code and see how things work so we'll add something it's it's polymorphic and that underscore we mentioned before that okay it's polymorphic it accepts anything and as soon as we add the first element it automatically works out the type it infers the type and the underscore means after we add the first element even if you empty the stack we won't be able to change that type uh, of that stack so we add an int uh, let's add another one maybe push 5 to s again the stack name is after the value unlike the hash table push for example 6 and remember now first in last out or first in first out we'll find out very soon maybe 7 to s and now if I want for example to have a look at the topmost element I just use what I use um, <coughs> top so I say I'm sorry the s stack top s and the top now is what it's 7 because that's the last element we added remember last in first out unlike the queue that we've seen in the last video uh, what else if I want to retrieve that and remove it and retrieve it I can say for example um, stack dot pop so I can say here for example int k equals stack dot pop s and the seven I'm sorry unbound value let yeah, yeah I need to say let int I thought I, oh, I thought I was doing Java programming there I'm sorry and then uh, k now ah oh, I don't I don't have to say int yes this is OCaml it's not Java yeah and now k should be seven and the stack was four had four five six seven before now it should add only have four five six and to uh, double check we can use the length function start with length s and it should be three in fact if we just say s it tells us the stack is an abstract tab of type integer as we mentioned before uh, another look at the documentation let's find out for example is empty let's check the is empty function so if I say let uh, empty maybe or not stack dot is empty by the way in OCaml if your function has uh, more than one word you separate them by underscore is empty s and it returns false because the stack does have some other elements iterate we've seen that before we apply a function um, clear to discard all the elements let's try iterate copy and then clear then so we can say for example stack dot iterate and we provide anonymous function yes the function first and say for example function we 
just raise this a little bit function uh, for example element C and then we just do print int C and maybe print new line as we did in the last video the new line doesn't receive any element any parameter so we just give it um, parentheses and then the stack s and then it prints 654 remember the order last in first out so we go from top to bottom when we add these things and then retrieve them back <coughs> um, one thing to mention here is that the print new line is the last function before uh, closing the anonymous function with the parenthesis with the left parenthesis so we don't have to add a semicolon but if we add it there's no harm in doing that now if you want to retrieve another copy then we say for example copy and then say we say stack dot copy s and it, now cp should have the same elements and the proof is if we apply the same function now to cp then it should have the exact same now see the exact elements now CP is, a, is a totally independent from S, so if we change the size of S, then CP shouldn't be affected. So if I pop S again, we should get 6, and now CP should be exactly as it was before, because it's a separate copy now um, of the original uh, uh, S. Now to clear a stack, we just say stack dot clear S, and it just empties it and now the size of um, the size of s where it is to length should be zero now so you must have noticed by now that these data structures the hash table q and stack are mutable ie we can actually uh, change the values inside them yes we can change their contents i'm going to stop here again thank you very much for watching i'm seriously thinking of maybe uh, having sort of um, uh, another video where I use everything I explained in this tutorial in a source file and a camera source file and compile it and see I show you how to do that although I've explained that in my Okama tutorial please go back there and, and, and have a look everything you do in the top level you should be able to do it in your source file and even more than that thank you very very much indeed and I'll see you next time